I used to run uh, a small camera store and then uh, later uh, worked at a software company where I did a lot of stuff. And I didn't have the money to go and hire Gartner or Forrester or McKinsey or any of these uh, big organizations that help the Fortune 500 do their business. But today we have uh, a company called Focus.com which will help us with these kinds of business questions. And we're gonna learn more about that right now. Who are you? I'm Scott Albro. I'm the founder and CEO of Focus.com. And I've been working in Silicon Valley for about 15 years now and have helped start a variety of businesses out here. Uh, my first role in Silicon Valley was actually as a market research analyst, which we'll talk about that industry a lot today. Uh, I also worked in the application service provider industry, which has morphed multiple times into the cloud computing industry. And then before Focus, I worked for an open source software company. What is Focus.com? Bring us into the conversation about what, what you guys are trying to do. Yeah, so Focus.com, you should think of it as an expert network. We have about 5,000 business and technology experts on Focus who help business and technology professionals make better decisions every day. And they do that by answering members' questions, speaking at events, and publishing research that are, that's designed to help these people make better business decisions. When you look at the market that we really play in, it's really this closed, proprietary, legacy market that's dominated by dinosaurs. It's the market for business expertise, for lack of a better term. And you can think of the major players in there as being traditional market research firms, big consultancies, companies that provide data to other companies, and really they've built their models towards serving the Fortune 500, companies with extremely deep pockets. Yeah. So how are you disrupting them? How, what do you do that the Gartners and the McKinney, McKinsey's and the Accenture's don't do? Yeah, well, well really those traditional firms, uh, they're in the business of keeping information, research, data, and insights scarce so that they can charge a lot of money for that, for that information. We're in the business of making that abundant. And it's very similar to what Rackspace is doing in the cloud uh, in terms of making computing resources abundant. So we're basically trying to make business expertise abundant to the 30 million businesses in the United States who heretofore haven't been able to afford that type of expertise that a Gartner or McKinsey typically provides. So give me a, a sense of the kinds of questions or answers or discussion that'll happen on the site and what a small, uh, well any business, but especially a small business can learn. Well, that's right. I, you know, you're right to highlight the small business segment of focus. When you look at the 30 million businesses that exist in the United States, 99.9% .9 of them have fewer than 500 employees and by definition have a tough time accessing premium forms of expertise and advice. What most of those businesses like to do is they like to think about the decisions that they have to make in terms of the functional roles that exist in almost every business in the world. And you should think of those roles as falling into a few different categories. So sales, marketing, information technology, customer service, human resources, finance. Those are kind of the traditional horizontal roles that exist in almost every business. Then we also see vertical specific expertise play a role as well. So tell me about retail point of sale systems as an example of that. Yeah, and how is it formatted? T t take me through the site, what would I see and how do I find these answers? Because I, I bet there's a lot of them. Well, there is a lot of information on Focus and, and the feature that we use to help users find that information is we allow them to follow specific topics that might be of interest to them, so things like human resources or to stay in the HR category, payroll processing, benefits, HR compliance, those types of things. And then we also allow members to follow specific experts. So for a given category, we typically have 50 to 100 experts per category, and the membership can actually follow those individual experts. And what you end up with is a feed or stream of information, questions and answers, events, and then research that shows up on your focus homepage, for lack of a better term, so every it's sort day. Of like it's sort of like Twitter where you follow 15 experts that you like and follow some topics and all that stuff just keeps coming to your homepage? Yeah, that's right. I mean, we debated the, what the follow feature should look like for a long, long time and we're, we were tr stuck on making a decision between people versus topics and at the end of the day, we just said, let's do both. 
and that's proven to be very effective for, for the member community. Yeah. Um, how do I know that these experts are really experts? Uh, tell me a little bit about how you vetted them. And yeah, absolutely. Well, we're not afraid to use people here or, or human power uh, as part of focus, and we actually have a dedicated team of folks. It numbers about eight people who do nothing but go out and vet experts. And typically what they're doing is they're looking at a few different data sources to determine whether someone's an expert or not. One is, uh, are they truly an expert? And there's some interesting signals out there on the internet that will tell you whether someone's an expert. Link LinkedIn is a great example in looking at advanced degrees in a LinkedIn profile. That often tells you whether someone's an expert. Certifications are another example of something that will tell you whether someone's an expert or not. Second thing we look for is, do you have a proclivity to share that expertise? And a lot of people say, oh, well, Twitter is the best source of information for that. Actually, Twitter's too cheap. Yeah. The 140 too character cheap. tweet, anyone can do that. Do you have a blog? And do you write meaningful posts on that blog on a regular basis? That's a better signal that shows someone's actually willing and able to share the expertise that they have. And then the third thing we look for is actually Twitter. We want to make sure that their expertise is resonating, and so we look at how many Twitter followers does that person have. Those three signals, and some of them are qualitative, tell, tell us whether someone's actually an expert or not. Wow. Then we'll go out and manually reach out to that person, typically have a phone conversation, do a short phone screen with them, and if all goes well, they can become an expert on the site. Now, are these people paid? Uh, actually, we do pay some people for some of the longer form contributions that can exist on Focus. An example of this might be speaking at an event or publishing a long form piece of research that you know, might be 20, 30, 40 pages long in nature. Right. And look, there are a lot of communities out there that like to stay away from compensation based models. We actually believe in the B2B space in particular, in the enterprise space in particular. That's a perfectly acceptable incentive. Yeah. How do you guys get paid? Well, right now we make most of our money off of advertising related, related programs, um, and that's been a good business for us. There are a lot of companies out there, particularly technology vendors and business services vendors, uh, that want to target and engage a community like the one on Focus. Having said that, we're always looking at new monetization ideas, and you know, when we look at the value that's being created inside of Focus, we by no means believe that advertising is the only way that we're going to make money in the long run. Yeah. Now, you, you probably don't look at the uh, newer Q&A sites as competition, do you? Do you? Well, we do get compared to them quite a bit. One of your favorite sites, depending upon what day of the week it is, uh, we do get compared to them a lot, and that's Quora, of course. Um, well, you have a very similar look, and you were first with that look. And they, they copied a lot of the features that you guys had. Well, look, I, I don't know if they copied us or not. I I'll mean, say that. I, I, <laughs> I can no, say that. I, I'm paid to say that. Look, you know, <laughs> there, there, there are simple things like, you know, we've had a red and white logo for a long, long time. We've had this feed-based consumption metaphor for the content for a long, long time. We've done Q&A for a long, long time. Having said that, you know, we don't believe we're a Q&A site. We actually believe that we're an expert network that's trying to help businesses make better decisions better decisions. There's one feature on our site, Q&A, that allows for that, but we yeah. also do research and events. So, look, we think Quora is great. Well, there's a lot of incredibly valuable content and really well-known people and experts on Quora. Our experts participate on Quora quite a bit, but for us, we're trying to do something that's fundamentally different, which is really simple, just help businesses make yeah. better decisions. Yeah, Quora, you can discuss cigars or wine, you're not going to do that on uh, Focus. I, anyway. You're going to get your wrist slapped if, if you do. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me where what events are because that's uh, a unique feature on Focus. Yeah, uh, you know, events have kind of taken us by surprise. Um, they're probably the most, uh, the fastest growing feature on the website, and we offer three types of events on Focus, and I'll, I'll go from lightweight to heavyweight. The lightest weight form of event is what we call a round table. And it's actually just an hour long teleconference where three to five experts will get on the phone and talk about a specific topic. Uh, there's a tweet stream with a hashtag that kind of follows what's happening on the phone. But anyone can dial into a 1-800 number and listen to this round table at no cost. And uh, you know we're doing a few round tables a day now. So we've seen these things proliferate and they're on very specific topics. So we did one today on what was called sales and marketing 2.0. 
Uh, we had four or five experts in the, from the Focus Expert Network just speak on that specific topic. No slides, nothing like that. The experts love that because it's an incredibly lightweight, to, lightweight way to disseminate expertise to a targeted audience. Second event type is a traditional webcast. So it's very much like a round table, except there's slideware, there's a presentation, there's interactive Q&A that happens on the website as, as part of that event. Those are very popular events as well. That's typically one expert who's just giving a presentation. And then the third type of event is what we call an interactive summit. That's typically a half day long to full day long event. It's almost like a trade show type of format, mm -hmm. but it all happens online. Multiple experts presenting multiple topics throughout the course of the day. It's really interesting when you look at the numbers behind each one of those event types. So a round table typically get about 100 people listening at, at a given time. Webcast will get about 500 people, and then an interactive summit will get almost 2,000 people attending each interactive summit. So, wow. I, you know, I'm very excited about the events part of our business. Uh, I think events get short shrift out there because people tend to think of them as offline, heavyweight things. Uh, and what they forget is that they're inherently social in nature. Yeah. And that makes them really powerful, particularly when you start tying them into things like Q&A, Twitter, and things like that. It's really interesting. One of the things that uh, we did when we were first starting Focus.com is we went out and we surveyed the professional community. And uh, one of the things that we asked is, when you look for information that will help you make a better business decision, uh, where do you like to source that information from? And the overwhelmingly most popular source of information for a better, for a better decision is uh, the professional's peer group. They actually don't want to hear from the ivory tower analyst or hear from uh, some high paid consultant. Bob in the data center over here wants to hear from Rachel in the data center over here. And uh, so as a member of the site, you can just go ahead and answer questions. A couple things that you have to be an expert to do on the site. One is if you want to speak at an event, you have to be an expert. And two is if you want to publish long form research, you have to be an expert. Right. The reason for that is, again, when we surveyed the professional community, um, one of the things that business professionals really like is authority. Yeah. Uh, they need to be able to walk into their boss's office and say, you know what, focus stands behind this, or this group of experts stands behind this, and that's an important part of our model. Yeah. Um, if I'm a non-expert and I participate in the site, can I become an expert? Is that Oh something? yeah. That's okay. the best kind of expert, right? That person who, who kind of natively grows and displays their expertise on focus.com. We do that quite a bit. That's part of what the expert recruiting team does is they're actually out there every day looking for folks who, who've essentially displayed the requisite level of expertise on focus to become, become an expert. And that happens every day of the week. Are, are you algorithmically ranking people so that the system itself can warn you, hey, this guy is actually really good because he's getting up, you know, he's getting lots of comments and you know people yes. like him. And yes, we we do do we, yeah we we do do that. Um, the algorithm essentially powers uh, what the expert recruiting team goes and looks at every day. Okay. So there's still a human element or a human filter that gets displayed against the algorithmic results. Will it always be that way? Not sure at this point in time. We still like that, that human vet that occurs post output from the algorithm. That's been really valuable to us. It's really valuable to the experts as well, right? Just to have a human touch before they really get going on the site. I, on any site like this, m when you get a, uh, an audience, it's valuable, right? And it draws in bad actors, trolls, and spammers. Yeah. How do you protect the site against this? Well, we do, it, we do it a couple ways. One is the experts create the vast majority of the content on the site. They, they set the ground rules, if you will. It's almost like having this controlled community, right, of experts who are out there setting the tone, um, establishing the ground rules of the community, not because we wrote something on some page that everyone should go read, but because when someone comes and has an experience on the site, um, this is what's expected. These are the rules and nuances and norms of the community, and it's the expert network that really sets those rules, norms, and nuances. And that's, that's this incredibly powerful secondary benefit of having the expert network. But then the other thing that we use is simple up and down voting. And uh, we, we, we found that to be an incredibly powerful feature on the site where the community kind of self-polices and 
uh, is aggressive with down votes where where need to be and um, and does it li list those in real time? Uh, it does. It does. It does count votes in real time. Yes. Okay. So, uh, do you get many qu many uh, questions where a bunch of people all answer all within an hour or something like that? Yeah, it, I don't know if it's an hour per se, but typically within within the day, uh, you'll see a question gets multiple answers. I think we average uh, about 4.9 answers per question on the site right now, which is a good number given the volume of the questions on the site. You do have some questions that will go unanswered just because, for whatever reason, they go unanswered. Um, the most important thing about Q&A on the site, though, is that uh, we want people to receive real, actionable answers to the questions that they're asking. And we trust the experts to go out and answer those questions as, as they see fit. There's no community moderation on the back end or community editing of those answers. We trust the experts to answer these questions the, the way that they want to. Okay. Any, anything else that we should know about? Uh Focus.com? Well, we've had about a million members use the service, wow. and um, we're very excited about that. We have a long way to go before we've truly disrupted this market for business expertise. What's the turn rates like? Are, are those people sticking around and, and actually staying active in the site? Yeah, we do see uh, very, very active membership on the site, and um, that number uh, is not something that we typically disclose, but we're very, very happy with the number. Um, people really like the site. There is no go-to place for business expertise on the internet. There just doesn't, there's nothing else out there. And when you think about these three types of media that we put into the system on top of this expert network, Q&A, research, and events, it really allows business professionals to make the decisions that they need to make. What's next? What's next for us really is a major, major investment in the events part of our business. That's the part of the business where you know we feel like we have a nice core platform. Q and A works very well on the site. Events work very well, but there are these integration touch points that you'll see us make an investment in with our event strategy in the next quarter here. Yeah, I just want to help that small retailer or that Fortune 500 manufacturer make a better decision at the end of the day, and I want to make it free to them, open to them, easy to use, kind of all the things that they've traditionally been asking for but haven't been able to get from the incumbent players, that's what we're about. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thanks, Robert. Good to see you. Okay, good.